Adrian Taylor, I'm 80 years of age now. Um, I've had a really good life. I was married to my husband for 50 years. I had three beautiful daughters, five grandchildren, and I have two great-grandchildren who I absolutely adore. Um, and we've had a good life, a really good life. I worked in an office. I've worked in a factory. I've worked cleaning. I've done all sorts of general jobs, but we've been very happy. And as I say, we, met, we built a good life for ourselves. And I'm sure my husband would have loved the children, the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. So that was our lives with our, our children. At the end of February, I'd had a knee replacement and I was at home on crutches. And I think I began to listen to what was happening. And then it was, I had to go into 12 weeks of self-isolation, which meant then that I had to work for myself in my own home. Um, and that was quite hilarious at times, trying to do things when you've got two crutches and you're trying to do your general house and your washing and this, that and the other, but you adapt anyway. Nobody was allowed in the home, even, you know, the girls all stayed outside or, or when we did it on the laptop, but no, it was that isolation thing when I was on crutches that I think that was one of the hardest parts initially. So I guess the plan was then when you were on crutches was that the kids would come in mm. and, and help you and do all mm. the things that you suddenly couldn't. That's right. Um, Elaine was doing much, she used to take my washing and ironing home with her and do my shopping, but she was still working full time. And obviously under the stress of COVID being about and you're going shopping and, you, and you're nervous. And I just had to say to her, look, you go and look after yourself because she was looking after Laura as well, her daughter who's in isolation. I said, I will sort myself out. Um, and and you just have to do what you have to do. But it was it was stressful, very stressful for me because I knew Elaine was out there doing my shopping for me. I've I've got quite a few interests with my laptop and things. Um, it was very lonely. Um, and not having any contact with my family because we are a very tactile family and even now it it's not fully we we don't hug and kiss and that sort of thing we've always done that and it hurts me as, and i know it hurts the family because that's what we miss very much but it's in everybody's interest but I, as I say, I found things to do. Um, I decided after a few weeks of self-isolation that I wasn't feeling very comfortable with my knee and I thought I need to walk sooner than walk around the bungalow. So I took to doing some walking in the street and I thought, well, other people are wondering about, I can do this as well. So that was pretty good for me to get out there. But my laptop was the contact with the family because we FaceTimed a lot and, and what and, and it was very beneficial for us. I'm going to throw a random question in here just because I know obviously you're thinking about difficult things so I'm just going to ask while we had that heat wave did you put your bikini on and <laughs> sunbathing? No. <laughs> no, when it's hot like that I'm sat here with my fan on and I don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to do my bit and in the, uh, No, no, the no. no. I don't think I've ever worn a bikini in my life. Ever. Bathing suits, yes, but not bikinis. Well, at 80 years old, maybe it's time to start. Ooh. It's going to, be, going to be warm this weekend. So they say. So they say. Very Indeed. well. Indeed. Yeah. From what I understand, from what I saw on Facebook, you had a big birthday. I did. I did. So if you could tell us a bit about your birthday, what the plan was originally for that, what ended up happening, and a little bit, if you're comfortable with it, about how that made you feel. Well, I knew, I don't know particularly what the girls had got planned, but I know they had something really special. Well, of course, that didn't happen. What I can say is, is 
whilst I didn't see anybody that day, I had somewhere like 30 cards, about four lots of flowers, and the phone never stopped ringing all day. So it was made a memorable birthday, but not in the way that the girls would have liked it to be for me. Um, but it's one of those things, we couldn't do it, and, and that was it. But yes, it would have been nice to have had us all together for a meal. The but surprise that we had planned, we haven't told her, so that we can still do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to ask. Well, no, there you go. I knew, I knew they would have made it very special. I knew that. But then we've had uh, my grandson's 16th birthday and leaving school and, and that's all gone for him, the disappointment for him because he's not had his prom night and everything like that. Uh, Pete's 60th birthday, that's all gone by the board. And yes, you can celebrate afterwards, but it's not quite the same, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but lots of people have had more disappointments. Friend of ours, daughter was due to get married this year, but cancelled. Mm. So now the government have said that you can come out of isolation, obviously we still need to socially distance, is that likely to make you get back in the car and go out and do things a little bit more? Only as much as interacting with my family. I'm still very apprehensive of picking up where my, where my life left off beforehand. I had a very full life. I was out every day at lunch clubs and and meetings and things and that's not happening and I don't feel comfortable in even going over in the hill to Arnold to shop. Uh, it's just a bit of a, a, a nervous thing, a bit fear, because um, it's not the same. I don't, I, I, it, it isn't the same when you're out there, it isn't. Um, I do what I have to do. And, and Elaine has now started to take me. She took me down the square so I could get used to and familiarise with down the square shops, what procedures were down there. And I've been a couple of times actually shopping, doing my major shop with her. Um, but going by myself, no. Is that something you think you'll get over? I hope so. I had a distinct apprehension of actually getting in my car to drive again because I'd been so long out of driving and I hadn't even tested how my knee would react. Um, so it's a little bit at the moment, a little bit moving forward but I hope, I hope I can get over that and move forward because I've always been independent, always, but I think this has really knocked that a little bit for me. As I say, I've had so much going on in my life. Um, I went yesterday for the first time with a bereavement group meeting and Carol that runs it, uh, set the chairs outside. Usually we have it in a house and, you know, but it's lots of activities come from that group which aren't happening now. But it was just nice to see people, some people that I've not seen for months months and months so that was a little bit of normality without being totally normal well first and foremost is full contact physical contact with my family that i miss more than anything i do get to see them face to face now which is brilliant um but we we just miss that tactile side of my family um and I miss my friends. I have a circle of friends that we go away three times a year. Um, and we've had to cancel. Mm. And we're not looking forward to doing anything until next year. Mm. And it, it is, it's just a, just a dead stop in your life of, of all what you've built up. But it will come again. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Is there anything you'd like to ask your mum, Sandy? Just while we've got her here, anything burning questions you've got? It seems daft not to ask the question if you. I don't know. I think we we've talked so much over this last six months about all sorts of things, haven't we? As we always do. Mm. 
Mm. Um, but no, I don't think I have. I mean, I miss my, I've missed my holiday with mum this year. Mum and I go away every year, but I've missed that desperately. Mm. That's my time with mum, and that's really important. Mm. Um, and I've, I have said, haven't I, that if, if this is all that we get to do until we get a vaccine, this me sitting eight foot away from her, then that's what it is. Mm. Because that's more important to be sat here mm. than than not be able, at least be able to see you. So. Yeah, I mean, I, Elaine is my bubble partner, and the first time she came into my home, because she's all stood outside across the path, and she came into my home, and I think she nearly broke me in two, hugging me so hard. And she said, that's a hug for everybody, Mum. And that made me tear up a bit. And I thought, well, we will get back to it. I know Lynn, my youngest one, she's, a couple of times she's gone to kiss me as she's gone. And she's, I can't do that, Mum, can I? And I just want to say to her, yes, you can. <laughs> it's just so important for us to protect you, isn't it? Well, Elaine, it's Elaine, uh, oh, for several days after, was so full of guilt about what she could have done after keeping, as she put it, me safe. She just, I just think, oh my goodness me, what happens if? I said, well, unfortunately, we're gonna to have to live with that and consequences of it for several weeks, months even. I mean, we've talked a lot about all of the things you've missed, but any positives? Yes, yes, I think, and I think you'll find it in most families because you can't get out there and you can't go to the club and you can't do this, family life has come to the fore. And we've had some lovely quiz nights on the Saturday night, all of us, and we've laughed and we've joked, but I've said now that they can go out and do their own thing, that will eventually go back to them doing their own thing. But it's been lovely and I think they've enjoyed their family life as well television's gone off and and that sort of thing phones have been put down so they're not doing this business all the time and the old family lives come back we've had some good laughs haven't we yeah, yeah. Indeed. it does feel like it's kind of pushed us back into a place where we all have thought a bit more about what matters mm. Mm. and i think the thing is because people haven't been working and it's a whole rat race really and I understand why you've got to do it, but there isn't time to relax and enjoy your family. Not the children or anything, because you're too busy working to keep a roof over your head. For uh, some, it's certainly been a slower pace, hasn't it? Mm, mm. And I promise this is the last thing, because I keep saying that, but then I just, I listen to you and, and it kind of leads on to other things. And given that, you are such a close-knit family and you've missed them so much mm. if you could give we're going to pretend sandy's not here and that i'm just in the room with you right is there a message that you would give to your family given all of this and how you feel about them i couldn't have got through it without them um they've been amazing every one of them in their own ways and their capability to help me because Sandra did move out of the village. Lynn was under a lot of pressure working at the hospital um, and she was obviously very scared about that. Um, but no, I, all I can say is I would never ever have got through this without them as well as I have done. And I don't know how people that haven't got that support have coped. Uh, it's been it's been so hard not to be able to help as much as we would need to as much as we would want to it's just just when you when you shut that door on them and there's just nothing and you can't touch them um it, it made it a little bit easier when they could have six in the garden and then laura could bring the children round and that made it a little bit easier. But it's still missing that closeness of the family. It hasn't affected us in how we feel about one another, but it's that that's missing.
it's that that's missing is being able to do that i'm not family june and i want to come and give you a big hug now oh bless you <laughs> bless you